All right, folks, how are you doing today? Today I'm gonna to try and give you a in-depth, digestible breakdown of the Marine Corps promotion score weighting and how it all works for a junior enlisted. All right, so starting in 2020, the Marine Corps moved over from the composite score to the JPEZ score. All right, and what a JPEZ score, all right, the acronym is Junior Enlisted Performance Evaluation Score. All that means is that's the score that you're gonna need to get promoted. All right, backing up a little bit, the way the Marine Corps works is every month around from the 16th at the earliest to the 29th, a score will come out by MOS. All right, so in the Marine Corps, there's all sorts of different jobs. They all have a different MOS number. All right, for each MOS for corporal and sergeant, there will be a promotion score. And if you meet that score and you meet a couple other things, you're gonna get promoted on the first of that next month, okay? So, the junior enlisted performance evaluation score. All right, it's a lot of stuff on the screen. I'm gonna break it down and make it real easy to understand. All right, I've gotten promoted twice with this system and I would like to think I've helped a lot of junior Marines get promoted with this system as well. All right, so this came in literally the month, I got promoted the month after the composite score went away. So this is what I used to actually pick up with both times. All right, so the starting out, this comes from MOL. I just pulled everything from Marine Online. So these are the four sections which will go in to totaling your actual score. All right, so first we'll talk about how this is weighted. So each of these is going to be worth 25 percent of your actual score. So war fighting, physical toughness, mental agility, and command input. And there's a total of 250 possible points in each of these categories, okay? So the highest JPEZ score that anybody could ever have would be a thousand, all right? And I've never seen anybody even close. The highest I've seen, the actual highest I've ever seen was around 700 but a very high score would be considered 600 or above, okay? So, war fighting, we'll start here. This is gonna be your McMath belt, all right? And a rifle score. So, talking to the people who are trying to get promoted and talking to my junior Marines who are looking at getting promoted, what I tell them is look for the portion of your score that you can affect the most, all right? because some of this only happens once a year or less. Like your rifle score, probably only gonna get one shot of that once a year or less, all right? But your McMath belt, let's say your tan belt or gray belt, is not that hard to hunt around and find a course and get that thing up, all right? So I always recommend McMath to anybody who's not hurt and is able to, all right? The next portion is gonna be physical toughness. This is a huge area that people can improve on. This is gonna be your CFT score and your PFT score, all right? This is one area that people just neglect. They're like, oh, I can't run three miles. I suck at the CFT, whatever. Like, you have a whole six months to train for that event. Say you just ran your PFT three months ago, now it's CFT season, but you wanna pick up, you're gonna be eligible in six months. Well, train for the next six months for that event so that you can run a good one as soon as the season starts next year, okay? So make sure that we're maxing out our CFT, PFT, or the best that we can possibly do, okay? And that'll be another 25% of your score, like I said. So third portion, mental agility. All right, this is another good one, another great one actually to make progress on your score if you don't like what's going on. MOS quals, all right? So each MOS is gonna be different. There is a breakdown you can find online of the possible points inside your MOS. All right, for the majority of aviation MOSs, since that's what I'm most familiar with, you can get 30 points for your CDI. At least that, that's what it was for mine. And I believe it's 40 for a CDQ, okay? But just always look for areas to improve your score. If you're a corporal, you've been a corporal for a while, or you're a competent lance corporal you're trying to get your CDI, go get that thing, and that will help you pick up. All right, MCIs, this caps out at a max of 40 points, okay? So 
get those easy 40 though towards your main score. All right. Self-education, this is gonna be any college classes that you are doing off duty. All right, so for me, I've been doing college for the past year. Each class is gonna be worth five points. All right, and I'm pretty sure you can max at 20. They wouldn't give me any more than 20. Okay, so do four college classes, you'll get 20 points towards your score. All right, easy money. Command input. All right, this is gonna be something that you have control over, but you don't have control over once it's in, all right? This is gonna be what your section leader, your corporal, your sergeant thinks of you, all right? This is gonna be your your grade for that period, whether it's a semi-annual period or quarter or however your command or how they have it broken down. JPEZ still has a lot of kinks in the hose or working everything out, but it's gonna be your leadership, your MOS slash mission, and your individual character. Okay, this is gonna be how they grade you on that. So, what I recommend to everybody with this, come in, have confidence, have a learning mindset, and just be an overall good Marine and good person, and you're not gonna have to worry about any of this. All right, stay off the shit baggery, stay in the fight, stay motivated, ask them, ask your corporal, ask your sergeant, ask your staff and CO what they expect of you, all right? You should be getting an initial counseling when you first check in, they should lay out exactly what they expect of you. Do those things and you'll have nothing to worry about right here, okay? So that's kind of breaking down the actual score of everything that'll go into your JPEZ score. Bam, right there. So you got your score, you're wanting to see if you can get promoted. These are the boxes you're gonna to have to check, all right? First thing, are you recommended? Okay. If you are not, which will be known as a non-rec, you had to do something to get non rec all right? You don't just get non rec because of whatever, like you either failed the PFT, you suck at your job, you're fat, something. So if you are non rec your first freaking box to check, get your non rec wiped out, okay? So you're recommended. Next, are you PME complete? On top of this score, in order to pick up the next rank, you have to be PME complete for your current rank. Now, what does PME stand for? It's gonna be professional military education, all right? For the Lance Corporals out there, it's gonna be Lance Corporal Seminar and then the online portion, okay? For the Corporals out there, it's gonna be the online portion, Corporal Scores on Marine Net, and then the actual Corporal Scores that you go to, okay? So PME is a huge part of it. People are always complaining, I have the score, but I don't have PME. PME, yes, it can be difficult to get a class date, but if you are eligible for this next rank and you haven't done PME, that's your fault, all right? Because you've spent months, potentially years, in your current rank and didn't find it in yourself or didn't pressure your command enough to let you go to a corporal's course or a Lance Corporal Seminar, that's on you. And I understand as a Lance Corporal, it can be difficult to get any Thing moving, all right, but use your chain of command and get the ball rolling so you don't have to get in a position where you're recommended and you're not PME complete. And let me add on to this last part, time and grade, time and service, okay? So this is gonna be your time in your current rank and your time in the actual Marine Corps. So there's different requirements for each rank for picking up the next one, all right, for time of grade, time of service. I know for corporals, in order to pick up sergeant, you have to have four years, time of service. Now they just came out with a, uh, an order like last week that changed some of this, but if you are not planning on re-enlisting and you wanna pick up sergeant before you get out, you still have to have four years, time of service, okay? So, to recap everything, the score will come out at the end of the month. Whatever score you have will be your score for the next month. Now, I know that sounds confusing. Let me break it down. So let's say your score on freaking April 1st is down 500, okay? Let's say you're trying to get this thing up. 
He ran a bad PFT. Could have been that bad because you have 500, but you want to run a better one. Okay. On April 15th, you run your PFT and your scores goes up to a 515. Right? Pretty good jump. And now the score comes out on April 25th. The, the May 1st score, the promotion score, is a 510. Guess what? You're not getting promoted because the, the poll for this score is pulled from the 1st of April, okay? So anything you do in that month will not count until the actual next month, all right? So say you don't do anything, you're sitting with your 515, you're cool, you're, you're probably butthurt because you got the score, but you didn't get it in time for it to get pulled, if that makes sense. The, the promotion score for this month is pulled from the promotion score of the first of the last month, the previous month. So let's say May 25th rolls around, a June 1st score is a damn 500. Guess what? You got your 515 from April, which would have rolled into your score on May 1st. So your score is a 515 on May 1st. The promotion score was a 510. You don't have a 510 on April 1st, so you're not getting promoted. But you had a 515 on May 1st. The promotion score for June 1st is 500. You're getting promoted. Okay, I know this can be very confusing, but it all makes sense once you understand it, okay? So my biggest recommendation to everyone, get everything in as soon as you can. If you know you're coming up on eligibility to get promoted, do all this stuff early. Do this stuff two, three, four months early. Like what I see guys is like, oh, I'm eligible in May. Let me run my CFT, PFT, do a McMath course. Obviously you can't do all that in a month, but let me do a whole bunch of stuff in April, but you're still gonna be waiting till June. So consider that once you start getting close to getting promoted. Okay, so I hope this cleared a few things up. I understand that it's a lot of information, but if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I should be able to help you out. All right, appreciate you watching. Any other questions, any video suggestions, please let me know. All right, guys, one more point that I have to add before I go. All of this goes into getting promoted normally. All right, none of this takes in meritorious promotion. The only thing that you're gonna need for mer meritorious promotion is PME complete. All right. Obviously, you're going to need to be recommended, but if you're PME or meritorious material, you're obviously going to be recommended. Time, grade, time, and service doesn't matter. Your JPEZ score doesn't matter. But if you are meritorious material, it's probably going to be pretty good. Okay. But you're going to need to be PME complete to get meritoriously promoted. So if you're a freaking hard charger, don't worry about all that stuff because you're probably pretty good anyway. All right. Just needed to add that in there at the end. Appreciate you watching.